Star Trek 57, M23, take two. It's the It's Got Star Trek podcast. about something. I wasn't just a regular Orion teenager. I was trained to be a syndicate assassin. Tendi, yeah, we know, girl. You can't just say you're joking around when you kick flip a knife out of the air. Your upbringing was quite obvious. I just hate that you guys had to see the real me. Tens, the real you is the one who geeks out about science on the Cerritos. But I'm a prime, you know, a, a trained assassin. is the most piratey someone can be. Incorrect. You are who you choose to be. A Starfleet lieutenant and a loyal friend. Don't worry. We know you're a big nerd and not some hot assassin. <sighs> that is the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Hold on, I got to get back to my note business. <laughs> Here's my microphone business. So we started? <laughs> we, we, we can start anytime. I thought we already started. Okay. I was going. That counts. Okay. I'm getting, getting, Welcome to the It's Got Star Trek I'm podcast. Up over here. That counts as starting the thing. Can you wiggle that thing real quick? Oh, I can wiggle oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it, it goes. Unwiggled. Oh, my gosh. It's so We're good. So wiggly. We're wiggling the thing, and it's time to go. Welcome, everybody, to the It's Got Star Trek podcast. <laughs> Dan's just jumping right in there. What was that? Say that again. Say that again. Welcome, everybody, to the It's Got Star Trek podcast. That's pretty good. You, you know, it's an interesting ca- uh, cadence that you've used there. It's not your standard Dan cadence. It's like a... God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> My sound wasn't up. MTV. Jesus. <laughs> I was going so pro. I was so pro. <laughs> You're going pro. I was going pro. Say that again, Patrick. Uh, what did I say? Go you pro, you complimented me. What was it? Oh, I, no. I, was it a compliment or merely an observation <laughs> that mean, you had an odd cadence? Thank you. <laughs> did that guy say thank, thank you? Yeah, that guy said thank you. Okay. Thank you. It sounds to me like he's saying side clue and not thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it does sound like that. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, all right. Uh, that's all, all right, I hear. All right, all right. But anyway, you were saying, Dan, Dan, uh, Jesse's making weird mouth sounds. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> Dan started, Everyone loves weird mouth sounds. Dan yeah. decided to start the podcast. Especially on a podcast. Yeah. What's, and, well, and there's the I, ASMR nonsense. Then, then, well, but, yeah, but you got to be in, you got to be ready for it before you do it. Should and, we do an ASMR and, special? And do people do like, I think so, do people yeah. chew weirdly in ASMR, like with pickles and, and yeah, goop and that's pudding very, and stuff? It's a spe- we did. <laughs> that's a specific. The, yeah, that's what I ASMR. mean. Is the general public w- wants to be signed up for ASMR before they get some ASMR? I would think. I'm assuming. I'm making an assumption. I have no uh, evidence to back it up. They don't want. You don't want some kind of gorilla action. Yeah. So my only evidence is that people always talk about how angry or or upset people. I shouldn't put the the the, the blame on the on the people. It's not it's not their fault. They're upset, but it's upsetting to people. A lot of people when they hear uh, certain sounds like mastication. Mastication. Mm. It can be upsetting to hear unexpected mastication. Upsetting mastication. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> okay. It's uh, got upsetting mastication. All right. So yes, it's got Star Hell Trek. Yeah. I think Dan got that part. I can't. I can't even remember what you said. You said most of the beginning bits. Welcome to the It's Got Star Trek podcast. That's right. With is the that what cadence, this is? With the odd cadence. So yes. season four, episode four of Lower Decks called something borrowed something green. Okay, that's more nor. That's like your more your your, your standard cadence. That's my standard cadence. That's more the standard cadence. Well, your standard weird cadence. My standard weird cadence. When okay. You're being weirdly performed. That's interesting. I'm I'm appreciating this outside perspective because to me, I'm just doing my thing. But like, and then. 
then when I was trying to not do my thing, I was ended up ending up doing more of my thing. And it took an outside. That's how it works. It took so. a second set of ears, a third, second and third set of ears to point that out. So, and I, to me, inside my head, it's something totally different. The creative process is a wondrous and mysterious thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, this week, we will be creating a podcast episode. Uh, I said that. In which we discuss Create a uh, podcast Star episode. Trek Lower Decks Season 4, Episode 4. Four. four. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> Some, Make my foot. <laughs> something borrowed. I just said that. And something green. I said that. Nobody was listening, though. I thought you said that, but I wasn't 100% sure, so I thought just in case, you know... For just to just to, get, to dot all our t- I's and J's and right. T's cross the J's cross the T's. I said no, yes. Mr. Rutherford. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Um, if it's all right with y'all, y'all, I have three quick points of order. Okay. okay. Bup, bup, bup. The, the first point of order. Bup. This this is this is. <laughs> This is totally uninteresting. Both all three of these are totally uninteresting. Just, right, just to be prepared. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> You're asking both the audience and your co-hosts <laughs> yeah. of an entertainment podcast. Yeah. Because we're not offering much useful information here. Mm-hmm. This is mostly meant to be a sort of a casual diversion while people sweep up the right, mess from right. last night, that yeah. sort of thing. Whoopsie uh, doopsie. <laughs> you're Mow pre- the lawn. You're, preferenci- you're prefacing this segment that you're about to introduce. <laughs> As boring. <laughs> as, 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 as totally and utterly boring. <laughs> yeah. Please continue. Um, yeah, so number one, when I was uh, marking uh, my sounds, while I watched the episode the second time, I mark the timestamps of each sound. Because you're the keeper of the sounds. Right, the keeper of the sounds. Dan is the keeper of the sounds. Yes. Of the majority of the sounds. Yes, indeed. Um, mm. The escuchalero, as some might call. Your time will come. Um <laughs> Jesse is the keeper of the threats. Yes. <laughs> the occasional so <laughs> inexplicable threats. Here's something <laughs> threats of violence. Here's something I found interesting. Last week and this week, I counted, and by the end, I had marked the same exact amount of sounds last week and this week. And you You're know shitting me. I am not. And you know what's even more interesting? <laughs> this is unprecedented, what I'm about to say next. <laughs> Normally, I mark the sounds, and then some of them I don't use because they don't work out, but I usually end up with a few more because I find, like, as I'm doing it, I find more. I got, afterwards, my adjusted sound count for last week and this week were also the same. Your adjusted sound count. (laughs) Yes. So... So it's, you first of all you that you that you claim this is an interesting fact this coincidence <laughs> well there's two coincidences set of number yeah. no, 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 the mm-hmm. initial coincidence that, that you claim that that's interesting is already pushing it but then hell yeah but then when you when you <laughs> introduce this concept of of an adjusted like you're performing an algorithm to adjust mm-hmm. the numbers right. to conform them in some fashion well yeah i guess it's a little misleading cuz it's yeah it's not going against the curve it sounds like bad you're science you're right you're right it's it's technically not a Adjusted because adjusted implies an algorithm. Well, I'm well, slightly concerned because this is number one of a list of what three things. So, <laughs> well, oh, yeah. No. So, anyways, I marked the same amount this week and last week, and I ended up with the same amount this week and last week. But both those numbers were separate relative to each other. Number two, they were separate relative to each other, mm. meaning I, I I marked a different amount than I ended up with, and for both weeks those numbers equaled. I'll freely admit I'm thoroughly confused. I had let's say I had. I think we're gonna have to stay tuned. Let's, let's say I marked down four sounds, but then I. Ended Ended up with seven sounds. I don't sounds. know what markdown means. Meaning, like, put the timestamp as I'm listening to the episode. Okay, all right. I, I'd be like, okay, there's one there, 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 there. And let's say I did five of them, and then when I actually pulled them out, I end up with seven because that's so. Sometimes just, it's four, sometimes it's five, uh, sometimes it's seven. What? I think I see what you're saying. <laughs> I honestly thought I was getting it, but I'm not. I'm when not. I listen to you're the- marking stuff, yes, and you think you've marked a certain amount, and then when you go back to check it out when i go back to actually to, to pu- extract it i end up ex- i usually end up extracting more than i intended yeah. i find extra ones yeah. ah okay There's extra yeah, i got you yes and the and 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 while, this is interesting in some fashion because last week let's say i marked five some fashion. but ended up with seven this week i also marked five and ended up with seven <laughs> the actual numbers okay. are different but the point being is that mm. i got the same amount for both weeks marked and then a separate number that was the same amount that I ended up with for that both weeks. That is truly 
Fascinating. Yeah, it's crazy. The mm-hmm. odds are astronomical. Okay. Well, <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two. <laughs> um, number I, two. I was thinking about last week when we played the game. Um, what does what problem does Patrick have with this episode? The game, yeah. the game was, was a good what, one. The game yeah. was what is Patrick's primary critique. And of this I, episode. And my argu- I have a new game this week, by the way. Okay, my argument, <laughs> my argument is that I actually won that game. I guessed it correctly, but I guess I didn't put it in the exact correct order of words. Did you win that one? Well, Patrick said none of us got it. Basically, no, he was, I, no, I, I gave you credit. I think I said you got points. I think you said Did like we, you said you deserve yeah. the points. Well, yeah, I think yeah. Patrick said like you almost got it. Yeah, I think it's yeah. something to that effect. Okay, that that's well, sounds- because and you I did, think you- I did get it. Well, okay. because like I brought up two points where I was like, this was predictable. This ended up in a predictable plot, and this ended up in a predictable I, I, plot. Now, and we- you were in your I mean, your problem was the plot was predictable. Now they were slightly different focuses, but uh, my point was there was predictable aspects, and your point was predictable aspects. Maybe. Maybe those aspects we were focusing yeah. on were different, but we both felt that it was a I'm predictable gonna, episode. I'm just going to point out that you risk where you risk actually talking about this week's episode. You're getting pretty close to talking about okay. this week's episode. Okay, okay, okay. And I don't number think you three. want to do that just yet. Number three. Because, yeah, because you still have number three of this number list three. of three to talk about. I was listening. And I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of bonus item as well. No, there's not. I promise you. Often with Dan, there's one. a bonus item. Yeah, not this time. Or an, oh, you know, I just remembered item. Yeah. No, not this, not this week. I I actually wrote them down. So I was listening to parts of episode two hundred for whatever reason, and um, mm. I I was talking about <laughs> just like just like three, I was three in the for morning. For whatever reason, three in the morning, and you're just listening to to listeners heap praise upon us in the darkness. Hell yeah! <laughs> um, Go listen to episode two hundred, like folks. I'm not able to sleep until I hear some. Episode two hundred was a, a whole fun battery of compliments. It was a fun episode. Whoopsie doopsie. Fun episode. Um. I misspoke about, I was talking about um, certain British dialects and sometimes end words in R. They add an mm. R to the end. What, really? Yeah. Some, what I said in the episode is I said, if the next word begins with a consonant, they end- Like banana? If, they, if they're saying, what I was saying is if they, yeah, banana. If they said banana- Jamaica. What I said is if they, it, in, they would add an R to the end of banana if the next word mm. began with a consonant. That was incorrect. What I meant to say, they would add an R to the end if the next word began with a vowel. Mm. So if they said the banana goes, they would just say banana goes. But if they were saying that banana awesome, they would say that banana awesome. I know that's not, <laughs> that's confusing because that's not really a sentence. Oh no, but, it's not at all confusing. But that, and I, I look great. And I, so I meant to say vowel, not consonant. It's if the next word begins with a vowel. And this is a thing. It's called the intrusive R. And it's some British dialects do this. You're missing the verb. Where, where I know, but that's not. That's why I was confusing because that's totally not the point of what I was saying. I thought you said you wrote these I knew, down. I didn't write down an example. Okay. okay, the banana goes versus. Where does the banana go? The, the, the I'm, I'm quite intrigued the about banana, where this banana goes. The banana goes versus the banana exit. No one knows where the banana goes. <laughs> Versus the banana exits. If you were to go, so it wouldn't be. It would be banana goes, but it would be banana exits. That's the intrusive R. Banana exits. And I can guess where the banana exits. <laughs> and uh, that I have more and, confidence. And I apologize. <laughs> this is an editing. I don't know where it goes, but I can guess this where is, it exits. There's this, only a few exits. This is an editing note. I apologize for misspeaking. It doesn't. It's not when the next word begins with a consonant. Is the next word begins with a vowel? And this is a thing I looked up on the internet. Right. After after I noticed it, I was like, Is this a thing or am I? making this up and i looked it up and it's called the intrusive r it's a thing not all british dialects do this but some of them right it's not everybody yeah Yeah. all right well i i do like this new uh (laughs) this new feature points of order (laughs) no we're gonna offer this new feature in which dan goes back and listens to old episodes of the podcast and And makes apologizes makes (laughs) makes corrections (laughs) <laughs> to only the things that he said. Right. <laughs> even, oh yeah, that's the stuff. Even if the podcast Dan, is, Dan happened quite some time ago. Okay. Um, Beautiful. All right. Well, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. We do have. What are I, we gonna do? I did want to do some listener email stuff, but let's yeah. do that. We'll, we'll do that. Hell yeah. We'll do that at the beginning of the second break because I want to oh, get oh the second break. We're t- we've been talking a lot without getting into this episode. People want to blast me with more moves. People want to talk about this we episode. Should, we should bust out. So man. we should start talking about this episode, and then when we get to the second break, yeah. we can do listener email. You, you, this this episode has Orion lower deck. A little bit, yeah. A little those, bit. Uh, it starts out with a little bit. With those, it goes uh, through my leg and wraps around up my neck. <laughs> Later on, they got a lot of bit. Uh, yeah, okay, so this episode, I was going to mention the game. Last week, the game I invented was... Uh, Okay. What's what's Patrick's primary critique of this episode? Beautiful. Uh, this week, the game is what's Patrick's 
primary praise of this episode. Triple threat, uh, girls trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's the stuff. Well, what's Patrick's praise of the episode? Yeah, primary praise. Primary oh. praise. Lots of praise for this particular episode. Mm. And I like last week's episode. Just to reiterate, for those who may not have listened to last week's podcast episode, I tried to stress, I did thoroughly enjoy the episode. I just found that all three right. of the storylines, they were just, it was just a predictable how they played out. You get a mm. lot of, uh, lot more attendee backstory. Yeah, here mm. you get a lot of attendee backstory. That's that's some praise, but that's not my primary praise. That's not the primary praise. My primary praise. The primary praise. Did it have, wait, did wait. it have to do with- Let us guess. Wait, yes. did it have to do with Talyn at all? No, again, like last week, it's more structural. Yeah, and I was wondering, there, okay, structural, purely structural. Okay, purely structural. Talyn was a pretty minor well, part of this. Episode. Was was there mis was there a structural misdirect that you enjoyed? No, no. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't want to waste too much time on this. Nonsense. Okay, because really, it's just the opposite, which is this week's storyline. Two the, Mozart. The whole thing about like, oh, you know, a character goes and deals with some family drama or whatever. Mm. This is in some ways similar to. Uh, uh, Esri Dax in in season seven of Deep Space Nine. There's that whole episode where she goes back and like deals with her family, and there's even mm. Orion Syndicate stuff involved there and stuff. But the idea being, you have a character and they have some family stuff. That's nothing particularly new. But unlike last week, I thought the way the storyline played out was unpredictable. Like there's ma there was many paths they could have gone down, and you never knew exactly a hundred percent which path they were going to go down. Ah, uh, I kind of I kind once again I, I kind of I kind yeah. of said that I said. Structural misdirects. I did say that. I said structural misdirects. That sounds like something you would say. I did just say no. that. So it's not quite maybe what you meant, but it is. You all take the verbal grease. I, no, and you slop it all no, over things, you said and were, you squeeze them into whatever were, fucking box you want. I said, does, I, no, you, no, man. because you said it takes unpredictable paths. I was like, does it involve structural misdirects? And you were like, no, it's unpredictable. Because I'm like, I well, that's really the same fucking I, thing. I, no, because I don't think it was, I don't think of it, in if we're being nuanced about this, mm -hmm. and, and we shall. <laughs> we shall. With whom? <laughs> Lick my foot. <laughs> um, it's not about Mr. Rex because, again, the storyline, everything played out in a very sensible fashion. The other thing that's great about this episode, which Lower Decks just generally does really well, is all the drama and the action, the motivations, they all make sense within with the characters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's really, it's really high quality writing in that all the actions do not veer from what you'd expect the character to do. <clears throat> and they can still surprise you. That's the thing is that that does not mean you have a predictable, boring character. It just means that if they're surprising you, they're still surprising you in a way that kind of makes sense. And I thought they did that here with the Tendi storyline, with her sister, with her family, and and introducing this all this information to us that she is in similar similar to Billups, sort of yeah has the fancy upbringing. They were her backstory. her family were like mega gangsters basically, right, and yeah. it was funny because like she was fitting in all the into all the stereotypes to the point where yeah. Talyn's notes were all just like stereotypes. Yeah. She's like, no, no, oh, you know, yeah. So right, yeah. I have a list of Talyn's notes, but we can go over that later. Um, I too was th alarmed. There was there was a uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> there was um, there were the 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 B story was kind Brother of Brotherford. The Brotherford thing was kind of um, I don't know really what was gained or lost in that in that whole thing. <laughs> Nothing can stop Brotherford. <laughs> <laughs> See, again, I really what? liked it because it was so silly. It was yeah. so silly. There was nothing really ended up. What I yeah, liked, now, yeah. I will say there was a couple misdirects, I will say, in that. All right, no, let's list them out. Number one. Misdirect number one. They were they set it up as if it was going to be your sort of traditional sort of like, oh, good friends are not going to get long as roommates, yeah. right? And that whole that whole plot, yeah. which they started with, but they resolved that like right away. Yeah, you know? yeah. They, they did it right away. So I, I like that. Again, it, was, it was not a Jake and again, Dog situation. Right. An old style story. Mm -hmm. But done in a new way, in an yeah. interesting way, and, and it just kind of went bonkers. But it's like they, it was after that; it just kind of went bonkers. Well, the, the thing is, again, it, it fit their characterization into a holodeck story because both Boimler and Rutherford, in most contexts, tend to be fairly non-confrontational. Now they can all, both of them can be flip out as well, but like right. they, they both tend to avoid confrontation. Mm -hmm. But they also have control issues where in certain other, also in certain contexts, they really want to are controlling, right? Yeah. And this this story is as slight as this story was. It was a great example of what happens when all those character traits overlap, and it results in them going mad, <laughs> and, and, like getting violent with each other almost. Little um, pony. And uh, and then of course, yeah, I agree with you. It got increasingly it got increasingly silly where they were like oh 
<laughs> in the context of this of this holodeck is what what led to the piece and so they of course make uh you know suggest that to uh yeah captain <clears throat> freeman the basic basic beats i'm sorry what were you gonna say jesse you were gonna say something well <clears throat> That was just really funny how it's somehow it's like Mark Twain and they both, they're both Mark Twain and they figured out like, that's how they can like resolve stuff. Like, like what would you guys, that who, dog won't who, hunt. who would, who would you guys be for your little bits that you guys get into? Like, <laughs> like who, would, who would you, I don't know. If you, you had Mark, access to a holodeck program. You think Mark, and you, sir, are as you, clever as an alley cat on his 10th life. Would you be like, you know, <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci or like. Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> You'd be Lyndon Johnson. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Lyndon Johnson waving his giant penis everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Flop, flopping his giant penis on people. Right. Look it up, folks. Look, Look it up. Look it up. Right. President Lyndon Johnson yes. likes to oh, intimidate people with his penis. Vote for, the, oh. vote for this bill. Slap you in the face. It's a good question, Jesse. It's a good question. Which character would we do? I don't know. Uh, I, 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 something appealed to me about this whole using the Samuel Clemens Mark Twain character. And specifically, the, re the, the reference, the sort of soft Easter egg to the um, Time Zero two-parter in TNG. Yeah, right. He's in that one. Right? And then, of course, there are many Twain references and quotes throughout Star Trek. I Japan's say you are city. incorrect, no, sir. You. I, like, I was like, no, they are. <laughs> I Japan's say you city. are incorrect, no, sir. You. I, <laughs> I don't know. That was really funny. Lawyer. Um... Yeah, so uh, the, I, I can the beats of that that plot was basically like they love each other. There's trouble in paradise. Um, their shared shared love of little bony starts an argument over who gets to feed it. By the way, little bony, little bony, <laughs> such a funny name for <laughs> I know. a bonsai tree. I get it because it's little a bon, bony, bonsai bony, bon bony. I don't bonsai bony. Bo yeah, I'm no expert, but like I don't think the Mark, little bony. Mark Twain. Uh, like the Samuel Clemens that looked like that of that sort of that age, like he wasn't hanging out on a riverboat. Like he was. Uh, holodecks don't need to conform. He to was living in. Accuracy. He was living in like upstate New York. Um, so the the point. So we're getting to that there. Anyway. So 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 Dan, yeah. Dan, Dan's, so Dan's completely ignoring. Yeah. No. no I'm, well, I'm, I was in the middle. No, I was just. I, no, no. I, but we're almost there. We're almost at that. We're part. We're almost at the part. <laughs> no, I was just. I was just starting to. Li I was just starting to list the beats of of the plot. Oh yeah. Listing yeah. the beats Hit of the plot. I'm, I'm okay. enjoying it. So Hit they it, so they got into an argument over who gets to feed it. Like they are fighting over who gets to do chores, basically. Um, and then Rutherford's like, "Well, I got techno knowledge," and and Boimler's like, "I got natural knowledge." <laughs> Um, He's like, I've got dubstep Mr. knowledge. Rutherford. So they end I've up- I've got jungle knowledge. I said no, Mr. Rutherford. Dubstep drum and bass knowledge. Hmm? I said no, yes. Mr. Rutherford! Yes. Um, because you said one of them had techno knowledge and the oh, other yeah. one has like drum and bass knowledge. Yeah, yeah that was a good or, or dubstep knowledge. That was a good. That was one a good joke. Like I mean, acid house. Yeah. Your mileage <laughs> may vary. <laughs> um, so they immediately find common ground, um, like with their with this whole dress up thing. At first, they're mad. Because I think common ground is the name of an episode of maybe what Enterprise. So they Im know. so they immediately find uh, they immediately. Uh, 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 Initially, they're upset because they both dress up as the same guy, and then they immediately like get along about it. Um, and yeah, they're Mark Twain, the whole Mark Twain. Which, by the way, I found uh, the tune that they were playing. I was couldn't remember uh, the name yes. of Good that. Job. It was a, I knew it was a Scott Joplin rag. Um, Jop Joplin's. It, it was. Um, this is called the Pineapple Rag. I, oh, pineapple. yeah. I will not play the whole thing, but yeah. it's the Pineapple Rag by Scott Joplin. Which is one of those fun little ditties. A fun. Scott Joplin was jaunty cool little home. ditty. Yeah. So there was that. <laughs> um. So okay, that plot that ends. Early American composer. Then the next thing is the crew has trouble with an alien, right? Mm. And so Ruth. Typical. And so, and so for some reason Rutherford and Boimler try to use their personal therapy tactics to solve this interpersonal dispute between Freeman and Kokor. Which is pretty or funny. Yeah. Yeah, but That's it's pretty funny. It's in, yeah. It's, She's it's, talking it's, like Foghorn Leghorn. It's yeah, both she funny is. that they offer it, and it's and thinking that it'll work. That's what and, I was just about and, to say. Yeah. And it's funny that Captain Freeman's like, you know. Well, we'll give this a try. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. I know. That's just like just no question. Right. Like, okay. It's we'll like, try. It. Why would this weird specific thing work? Yeah. We really need to get, look at this fucking nebula. And so, and the alien An just oscillating nebula. Oscillating nebula. How do you oscillate a nebula? Yeah, you nebulae. It's oscillating. <laughs> yeah. Folks, what you can do at home is you can look up the joke that starts. <laughs> how do you titillate an ocelot? Yeah, I think and they you, can figure it out. And from you here. can you can either figure out the punchline or you can look it up using the old World Wide Web. Yes. So, um, how do you titillate 
An ocelot. Interesting, um, observing an oscillating nebula. I didn't know that that was such a once in a lifetime thing. I mean, for us, it would be. I didn't know in Star Trek. I mean, it, Tre- sounds, Star it's, Trek. It's like it sounds like a made up thing. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it seems in Star Trek, they would have like. I guess it depends on what the period of oscillation is. It's like a Thursday. It's time to look at an oscillating nebula. Yeah, well, that's a once a week. Once in a week type thing, not once in a lifetime type thing, depending on who you are. Um, the uh, so the they try with the alien. The alien just ends up getting pissed off, but what the alien does like of their shared interest is the bonsai tree. Mm-hmm. Now I should have seen. Well, he likes it. One thing that so. I'm yeah. Well, well, I'm getting to that. One thing that uh, one thing that I always forget to do is, is when I saw that bonsai tree, I should have taken note and been like, "That's going to come into play later." Yeah, it was Chekhov's bonsai tree. So, and oh. I don't mean Pavel Chekhov. I mm-hmm. mean the playwright Chekhov. Oh, and the metaphor of Chekhov's Damn, gun. Damn, this guy majored in English. <laughs> Yeah, ruin college words. <laughs> like gun. Check Pavlov. Pavlov. <laughs> Pavlov. 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 Check off. Um, no, I always forget to do that when there's some seemingly throwaway item that they, they introduce for like some reason. You're like, oh, they introduced that and they're going to bring it back. Like, I always forget to do that. Um, but yeah, the alien. So this is Jesse. You were right. The second misdirect. Because the alien was first like. Beautiful. Kokar was basically. Like, oh, and, you're, and it's funny. And it's funny. It's like, oh, they're playing the whole funny card because it's this big tough alien and he finds beauty in this bonsai tree. That's that's. And that's like, well, this is so predictable. Right. But then I was honestly uh, surprised when he ended up eating it. Maybe a lot. Of people weren't surprised by that, but uh, I think Boimler and Rutherford. Was yeah, surprised. I was. They were, at first, I was like, "Whoa, okay." Yeah, like, because, I was surprised. Yeah. I thought, yeah, maybe they were just For going real. the standard route. Yeah, little pony, but they didn't. They uh, they went there, and that was the second mis- uh, direct. So then he eats it and is happy, and then mm. but this is what Except I didn't for get. That one little branch. One, uh, yeah, and then just just to make him sad. For some reason, though, I wasn't quite sure why they were banned from being twain together. It didn't really make any sense. Like. Because I think they pissed the captain off. They pissed the captain off, right? I think but, that's what happened. I mean, and yeah. She was like, you can't do that. I anymore. mean, I see the relation between the plot and why they were banned, but when I looked at it deeper, it just didn't really make any sense to me. Why, uh, why okay, that yeah. would end up in it a It doesn't band. make that much sense. Captain but I think Freeman they just is kinda, mercurial. Yeah, I think they just kind of pissed her off. I mean, off yeah, it pissed her off because you were like, this was going to work, and it didn't. She so, was like, so you, she was like, fuck you guys. You made me talk like <laughs> Foghorn Lake. Yeah, so she was, just being a, she was just being like, fuck you guys. Like, yeah. that's racist. And then they just find another person to clock cosplay as at the end which is mozart so yeah which is pretty good yeah that's that's pretty cool. it was it was all entertaining it was just kind of like and they were it, like this is these are really hard to play it was, <laughs> yeah it was it was just kind of funny because the keys really... are they have hard keys mm-hmm. yes they did <laughs> there's no uh there's no dy- <laughs> dynamic the very twin twains twin twains Dang. harpsichords um uh, you can't play I like loud and twain. soft cannot stay you can only play like fast and yeah, slow. Yeah, that's why their harpsichords are not piano fortes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you know what I mean, right? That dog won't hunt. So, <laughs> like harpsichord music, like gets all like they just you keep playing like faster and faster. Yeah, fast. but, An but exceptional compromise, for, modulate Mozart. Your dynamics. It's good for uh, good for techno music. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always like the harpsichord it's sound. I'm no, a it's fan a, of harpsichord. no, it's a nice. Sound. No, no, I know, but yeah, it doesn't have dynamics, and that was like the piano yeah. was revolutionary. It just because the harpsichord just plucks. A real funny sound. The harpsichord plucks, yeah. and then the piano uses the mallet. Yeah. Fucking Actually. hammers that shit. Yeah, they hammer. Bam! They and, it's, the and, it's, and there's three, bam, 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 bam. there's like three strings that it hammers. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of fucking strings. It's a mm-hmm. it's a more complicated mechanism. So yeah, so like I said, the plot was just kind of like madness. It didn't really, like I said, nothing gained, nothing One lost. One step beyond. It was just, it was just kind of. It was just kind of. Touch this. It was madness. You said off the. It's like Pee Wee Herman, except it's the madness alone. Right. <laughs> Don't touch, watch this, watch that. This is the heavy, heavy monster sound. The nutsiest sound around. I like uh, the song about the, what is it, the, the last train from London or something? No, it was uh, Last, uh, last uh, Boat bo- last, last, last bo- last bo- to Cairo. Cairo. Last, last train from London. Uh, no, no, night, no, it's Night Boat to Cairo. Well, night that, Boat to Cairo. Yeah. That's a By e- ELO. ELO is last train to London. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was getting my I was getting my ELO. There's midnight train to Georgia. Yeah. Anyways, okay. this 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 plot line was just a romp. There was really Madness. there was there was really nothing yeah. nothing going on except just entertaining just, stuff. It was which funny. was fun. It was it fun. Was funny stuff. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. The 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 Mark Twain stuff was funny, and they mm-hmm. followed it up with like two mozies. It was good. Yeah, two mozies. <laughs> right. Uh, then well, let it, us tickle the ivory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, twin twines, twin twines, twin twines, indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we don't want to be caught twixt and twine, uh, two different sides of a break. 
So uh, we should have a we should probably have a break. Uh, we take a break and then we come back and we do more discussion. Yeah, there's a I bit am more. but a humble crumb on the biscuit of your wit <laughs> yeah, right. okay. yeah, there was a lot of that kind of stuff. That there was, was good, a lot of good that lines. Music. All right. Well, Mark we Twain. we will go over some of those lines and Twin a number of other Twain's. things. <laughs> number of other things when we return from the break. Be right back. Okay, I'll just push the button and then we can get it. Okay. It doesn't have to be exact. We're back from the break. Okay, Jesse has declared that we're back from the break. Oh, man, I went went to (laughs) pee-pee. It's so silly. Okay. Uh, All right, we'll get back to the episode momentarily, but as I mentioned earlier at the top of the show, I just wanted to have a quick uh, touching base on the whole listener email thing. You said after the second break. No, I thought I said after the first break. You said the second break. Sometimes, second. sometimes you, you people refer to the segment as the break. So this is yeah, during this is the, the, se- se- this is the second break. This is the Act second two. break. This is the, yeah. Anyway, then my point. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to shut the fuck <laughs> up and, and just listen to what you have to say because it's you know you. The long it's and the short now, of it. It's now the bottom of the hour. This is not a specific email, but as, as for folks who did listen to the 200th episode, we had solicited ahead of the 200th episode of It's God Star Trek. We had solicited uh, user comments via email email as mm. well as as well as submitted audio submitted audio comments, comments. and we had, we had so, some so many so many because fucking this fucking child, child. <laughs> i knew you were saying fucking child before you even said it but <laughs> but but we had so many that we can read them all and so many so in the intervening time in the meantime we have read a mm-hmm. couple of them on on the air we said we'd try to catch yeah, up so yeah we want to be respectful there's also there were a number of emails there was not a letter of them there was a number of them <laughs> there were a number of emails sent in that were all just variations on congratulating us for 200 episodes hell yeah yes which is now we're now in what is this episode 207 so yeah man some might say 208 no so, no no nobody be, would say would that be wrong. because they counted the pickle one no they shouldn't that's an it's that's, not star trek i know it's but, not, that's, not star trek. but that's one of those that's but but it's someone, a good episode someone though. might argue that no but no but one i'm not would saying they're, i'm not saying they're right uh, that's it's not Star Trek number one. I know, we but still some, haven't done a number two. I know. I'm not saying it's right. I'm <laughs> saying that it can be a point of confusion for some people. Okay. Well, if anyway. anyone cared enough, which they probably don't, no, but I don't probably think so. not. But the long and the short of it is that uh, a number of folks uh, congratulated us on our 200th episode, but they didn't have a specific question or other comment. So I'm just going to group all these names here. I just, you know, people, it's kind of like the Steve Wallace beer donation list. You know, people just want to see their names up on the on the internet. And so I figured, okay, we'll throw up some of the names. Blast me with more moans! <laughs> all right, so um, people who sent us emails with some variation on... Uh, Quote, congratulations on 200 episodes. All right. We have Jeff. No last name. Just Jeff. Maybe it's Jeff F. No, it was just Jeff. Jeff uh, F. Mar- Jeff F. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Jeff F. Margaret, Jeff F. Margaret Wallums. Hi, Margaret. Wallum. Michael Hennessy. Hi, Michael. What are you saying? These are people who said thank you for 200 oh, episodes. Oh, oh. Uh, just, just that's all they said was thank here's you. A, here's a goofy one. Somebody said, sign their email, Jeremy's Spoken. Which oh. is a reference to the the mm. Pearl Jam, right? Quite. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a song. Yeah. You absolutely belong on the crime throne. Uh, next name in the list. Thank you, Jeremy. Spoken. Next name is Hamster Sandwich. Oh no! Oh I don't know shit! If, I don't know about Please that don't blame me. Uh, David Osternath. That's what we are. Friedrich Schultz. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It sounds like uh, somebody from uh, Germany. Um, right now, I'm just a plunder <laughs> sorter, but I'm capable of way more. Uh, next up is Baba Booey. Mm. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Uh, next, we have... You think have... it's the Baba Booey? It was the Baba Booey. The, the Baba Booey? The Baba Booey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The next was signed... Uh, <laughs> That that oh. se- that sense of stillness on a cold winter night, ten years after a local tragedy. I that was the name of a person. That's the name of a person. I'm to doubt the authenticity. Of no, these, these are all real people submissions. who wrote in uh, and thanked us. The next next person on the list is a fellow by the name of Henry Bones. Beautiful. <laughs> and then you have Ellen Sandwich. Does he know Ken Bones. Ellen <laughs> Ellen Sandwich, who must be related to Hamster Sandwich. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next up, we have somebody who just simply goes by the uh, name Arn Karn Narn Ganarn. 
Uh, then, <laughs> then we have uh, John Perkins, followed up by Aaron Gherkins, followed up by Tuggy Jerkins. Wait, are these all three separate e- emails? These are, about, th- uh, these are three different people. Flimity flam flurkins. The last yeah, one, really. the last one might be Tug- the might, last one might be Tuggy Yerkins. I don't know if he's a Scandinavian fella. You're making this up. No, these uh, are real names. You're saying, no, but you're these but, people congratulated us on completing no, no, 200 I'm, I'm, episodes. I'm not saying that well, the names are made up. I'm just saying like. They all came together and they all happened to rhyme like that? Googly gigglins. Next up we have Molly the Lolly. Wait, 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 wait. Can you repeat <laughs> those last four rhyming last names? Uh, yeah, you had John Perkins. Perkins. And then Aaron Gherkins. Perkins Gherkins. And then Doug. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Tuggy. Jo- Joni Jerk. Tuggy Tuggy. Jer- <laughs> Perkins, Gherkins, and what? Tuggy Jerkins. Perkins, Gherkins, and Jerkins. <laughs> Tuggy Jerkins. Yeah, so, so, Whoa. These are all real people. And then, yeah, no, this, those are and, <laughs> additional, additional real people include Molly the Lolly. Okay, come on now. Peter the Skeeter. Okay, I get it. Christopher the Mystifer. I'm surprised it took me that long. Christopher the Mystifer. Yeah, Christopher the Mystifer, right. Right. He spelled it Mr. Fire, but I don't uh, think that's what he meant because it doesn't work with the pattern. Greg the Snig. <laughs> and finally, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Mm, yeah. Who I'm given to understand was quite fond of Jesse's jibes, as she referred to them. That means a lot. Yeah. She just like Jesse's little little side comments that sometimes Dan and I don't catch That's because cool, we're so yeah. preoccupied in whatever nonsense. Who is that? Ju- Jupiter the Zupiler? Is that no, who said that? No, no, that was Queen Elizabeth II. Jupiter oh, Queen, the the Nupiter. late, the late. She she sent that in early. Okay, yeah. right before uh, she passed on. Grandmama Boimler. <laughs> so anyway, I, I just thank you to everyone. Thank you to all those folks uh, who sent us in congratulations on 200 episodes. I just wanted to make sure some of those names got out. But you're seven episodes air. late. A cool duvet no. keeps the raisin rats <laughs> they away. Them, they sent them in well in time. <laughs> oh, this is just especially extra. the queen. The queen sent hers in in what, like July? Or something? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, maybe she's earlier. Been dead for like a year. And wow. Half. She sent it in last year. She just assumed we'd or make a year. it. Yeah. She sent it in around uh, episode 170. I think around Shadow Play. When Dan, when Dan started doing the sound effects, that's when the Queen sent us in pre, uh, yeah, preemptive congratulations Chief on 200, 200 episodes. Oh, that was really quiet. Okay. Chief O'Brien! Oh my God, from quiet that was too loud. loud. Chief O'Brien! That was just right. Oh my God, you give some Goldilocks motherfucker. Um, Evidence! <laughs> Okay. Balana's on it. All right, all right. Let's get, on let's it. get back to business. We thank okay. our, thank our listeners. Yeah, thank gonna... you all those totally non-made up people. I no. appreciate that, <laughs> especially Perkins, Gherkins, and Jerkins. Those are my yeah. those are those are Tuggy, my people. Tuggy Yerkins, Yerkins from, from yeah. Norway. Yeah, yeah. Stevie Squeevies. <laughs> thank you. All right, um, and done. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Uh, I said no, yes. Mr. Rutherford. <laughs> Sam the Sham. Let's let's get Where back to Pharaohs? business. Where are the Pharaohs? Let's get the back Pharaohs. to business. We'll be, get back to the old uh, Star Trek uh, dominant podcast seventh business. chords. Mm-hmm. Talking about Star Trek shows, and uh, this Star Trek show is uh, an animated show. Now I'm thirsty for mist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so do we want to go back to the tendy yes. plot? Let's, yeah, let's talk about the tendy That's plot. That's the A plot. Because even though it focuses on tendy, of course, she's the main person. There's also the whole, you know, Talyn and Mariner involvement. Mariner is actually in this yeah. episode sort of her, she's the most ancillary or ancillary, whichever pronunciation you prefer. Ancillary. The murder bug drinking game. Yeah, mm. which, which by the way was like really creative. It's totally. a surprisingly, I really enjoyed surprisingly that. creative spin on a drinking game that you have to. The motivation is to is to, is to not get bitten by the bug. Like yes. you, the only way yeah. you bring up the shield is by drinking the shot. That was pretty cool. And then was the, that. that was like she faltered and like something like just held her hand down. <laughs> Who? What? Yeah, she didn't make it in time, and so it like a uh, uh, something uh, came out and like the, oh the, something the Ma- came out. Madam G. Oh, okay, I so didn't. It I didn't I forgot that. So she couldn't pull her. So she couldn't oh. pull her arm back if yeah. she, you know. She wanted to. Clever. It was it's good world building. They had yeah. to do so much world building because they were going to Orion, a world we've never yeah, visited. Yeah. And Orions were introduced back in the fucking cage. And now uh now we know more and more of them from Discovery and from uh Enter- Enterprise. Enterprise has that There was a joke about it. Yeah. Did did you think the planet was was do you think Orions are green because their planet is green, or do you think the planet's green because Orions are green? 
You're asking I all heard, the philosophical I heard shit. that it wasn't easy to be green. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. heard that as well. Mm -hmm. Or or being green, I should say. What do you think that this sound? Are you just playing the episode? <laughs> like, is, that, is, that, is that our new gag? Just play the episode. Hey guys, we got this new gag where we just play the episode. It's got the entire sound clip. Uh, I, I need to make sure I normalize all these sounds before I start playing and really get my volume levels down. Sorry. That was a programming note that all right. the audience didn't need to hear. Yeah, but they've they heard it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I normalize my other sounds, but these sounds have not been normalized. I should have. It was a last minute edition. These sounds have not been normalized. Got it. This this Understood. sound of the last minute edition. This um, yeah, it's a little bit of a last minute edition. Yeah, Apparently, so it was last too loud. Edition. From what we understand, it was too loud, and then it was, it was too, too loud, soft, yes. and then it was too soft, and then and then Goldilocks. Yeah, and then we make a Goldilocks joke again. We've done this before. Yeah, because yeah. before it was too soft, then it was Just too loud. Every episode, I think. Before yeah. it was too soft, then it was too loud. This time it was too loud. Then or was it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've lost. The bleeps and the sweeps <laughs> yeah. and the creeps. Bleeps, the sweeps and the creeps. Okay, so we so yeah, so so Orion. That was a, that was a green. That was a green ass planet. That, that was a that was the first one thing I know. Do you think that's how they got them green asses? I was. I just. I just asked that. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's the philosoph. Yeah, I mean, you put it in a somewhat less philosophical way, Jesse. <laughs> but like, that's what. That's what Dan is asking. Yeah. And my response to you, Dan, is while I find the question intriguing, I do not know that we have enough data. Are the Orions to capable answer. of photosynthesis? That's a good question, because in a lot of sci-fi, and that's the thing they do. They add. Yeah. They add some. They yeah. add some chlorophyll, like in the uh, chlorophyll, more like borophyll. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly knew it. That's a Billy Madison joke. I, know. I was making a John Scalzi <laughs> reference. Okay. Uh, who in his Old Man's War? Oh, that's hipster series. Shit. There is a. There's some. Yeah, mine was much more highbrow than yours. <laughs> yes, it was much the more Billy high Madison re reference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, go read John Scalzi's Old Man's and War. And go watch Billy Madison. Actually, read The Android's Dream. If, you wanna, if you're not sure if you're going to like Scalzi or not, uh, pick up The Android's Dream and read that. I think you will be able to figure out from there whether or not you want to continue. And then pick up Probably the you'll want to continue. Pick up the novelization of Happy Gilmore. Don't Ooh. do that. I don't think that exists. It probably does. I don't think it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Tendi, Star Trek, Orion. Yes. Yeah. Am I what up? Even though we get to see way more of Orion than we have ever before, it's not like we see everything, right? So no. I, I do look forward to hopefully learning more down the line. We've all, but we get to but see, you see a, a lot of flavors. Tendi. We get to see a lot of Tendi. We did learn a lot about Tendi and her family background. Oh, I, what? No way. I really enjoyed the fact that her father's name was Bert. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you look it up, it's spelled B apostrophe R T. Yeah. Uh, this was an episode that I watched, uh, like, one time I watched it with the captions, Bert. and one time I didn't watch it, so I got to see, like, actual words that she, you know. I thought that Noelle Wells... And Bert. Yeah, saying Bert. Play that, like, five times in a row. Bert. And Bert. She, Bert. Bert. Listen, Bert. Listen how she does that. Bert. That's hard to do. Yeah. Bert. Man. She's such a, an excellent voice That's a non-English sound. Yeah. And Bert. Bert. It's brilliant. Bert, Bert, Bert. Yeah. Audience at home, good. if you think it's not brilliant, you try it. Out. No, I agree. That, that was. I think that it's. Was I think impressive. it's a hard thing yeah. to do. The burr. Absolutely. It's like a sheep sound. It's almost like a sheep bleating. Bert. Or a goat. <laughs> yes. And Bert. Right. It's great. It's fantastic. For yeah, those, I was. In, I was into it. In a big for those little that things. are cloven of who. <laughs> it's those little things that make this episode yeah, or so, this show. Such a great show. These the are the these talent are, is high these, high level talent. These these were the Orion names I picked up. There was Devana, of course. Of the, course. Then there was De Erica. De Erica. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> and then then there was Bert. And then Bart. then there was Shona or Shana. I yeah. can't remember. Then there was Madam G. And then there was Nial, which was her like. Mo Not, well, just that was just Niall. But, but it was spelled N. Neil. No, but it was spelled N Y A apostrophe A L. Yeah, of course. Instead so, of N I A L. I, I didn't remember how it was pronounced. I thought it was pronounced Nial, but it was just Niall. I, I think they just pronounced it like you. Pronounced anyway, so that was her. That, regular old her, that human was Nile. that was the Erica's uh, moan junkie ex boyfriend, yeah. basically. And then there was Ingrita, and Bones. so those are the names I picked up. There was also a Deborah. Oh, was there a Deborah? The I, I believe you. I think it was. She was one of the people, one of the sorters on the uh, Orion ship at the beginning. Well, it was interesting. So uh, Devana, De Erica, De Bert, I get it, but Bert. then, but then the, the mom was just Shona. Yeah, you know? maybe because she's the head of the whatever, and who knows? But they, she didn't have the apostrophe name. You yeah, know? They, they don't all got it. You know, it's like the Vulcans; they don't all got it. It's like when they do like the three name, the three names, like Hugh, Hugh, uh, they're, they're, Huey, Dewey, 
and Hluey. Those all rhyme, but sometimes they, they throw you... A, Perkins, thro- Gherkins, yes, and, and Jerkins. Jerkins. Sometimes they, they... I can't think of an example, but sometimes they throw you off. Well, they'll have three rhyming names, but then the fourth one, the last one is some completely different name. Oh. You know, they, oh, they play that joke like, sometimes. Uh, it's a good gag. Yeah. Like, it would be like Zap, Flap, and... Uh, flap, Zap, Flap, Dap, and Joni or something like that, you know? Yeah. And they're all brothers. Did you come sisters. up with that example just off the top of your head? <laughs> I just remembered it, actually. I didn't come up with it. I discovered ah, it. You discovered it in your memory palace. Because when people come up with mathematical equations and things, they didn't invent them. They discovered them because they were pre-existing. Well, that as might some be philosophers a bit, that's, might. That's a bit of a hoax, I think. Yeah, it's 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 arguable. <laughs> it's definitely something arguable. Yeah. But are you just specifically calling me out and telling me I'm full of shit? No, because I, <laughs> I might be. I'm just being silly. You you didn't you didn't you didn't uh, uh, call me a piece of shit. You discovered that I was a piece uh, of shit. I used the scientific method. <laughs> yes, you did. Empirical based, yeah. empirically, and also ethnographic observation there was, over the there course was, of thirty years. I studied yeah. evidence and data over the past thirty. Years. Evidence, <laughs> or at least the past twenty-five. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Her family. Her family, Her family. is cool. Her family is cool. Yeah. Uh, it's another rich family, but I don't mind it. I, I did allude before Ooh. to... Billups the, was like royalty. They were mega, mo- my yeah. mega mobsters. But in some fashion, they were st- there's a, there's a functional vibe. similarity in terms of yes. being a powerful family. It's yes. the same kind of like old school mm-hmm. elite. And they mm-hmm. call that out here. They call out explicitly the comparison with Billups... But as I referenced earlier, I think a better analogy is Esri Dax in season seven mm. of Deep Space Nine. Oh, do you think that? I, yes, I do. I think he does. Because Can you please explain yourself? I will explain it without spoiling that episode. Uh, in short, Esri is... Is it, is it because of something with her family? Yes, she goes back to her family and it turns out that her family is involved with the Orion Syndicate. And I wonder if they knew Shaona. Shona. I, I think it would be very interesting to be, maybe they bring Esri in via Tendi in some fashion. Do you, or do you Esri's think, probably a captain at this point. Do you think they knew Grandmama Boimler? Do you think they knew that? I don't know if they knew it's Grandmama It's like Grandmama Boimler. Boimler used to say. <laughs> you just want an excuse to play that Cold clip. duvet. Grandmama Boimler. That's kind of like on the same level as um as um um, um the other one that's um, like that, that's like this one. Yeah, Daddy daughter, one. daughter dagger dance. Daddy daughter yeah, dagger dance. Daddy, exactly. <laughs> During the daddy I was daughter hoping dagger you, dance. I, would, I was hoping you would bring that one. That's actually a beat. Daddy yeah. daughter dagger that dance. Is a daddy beat. daughter dance. dagger dance. Daddy other, daughter dagger dance. Daddy daughter dagger dance. There's a few beats in this. I've got a few. I've got a few beats. Yeah, well, man. now's as good an opportunity as any to to lay down some of those beats with a Z. Well, uh, there. Lay was, it on me, Dan. Click them all together. Click them all at once. Lay it on me, Dan. Lay it on me, Dan. I already played this one. I don't. Some of them I don't know if they actually are defined. Actually. Qualifies beats, but the murder bug drinking game. The murder bug drinking that game. Totally. Bert. Bert. I, for some reason, I'm, I think I just <laughs> like that really one. Bert. Bert. Daddy daughter dagger dance. 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 A lot of it. 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 Sorry, sorry. Had to steal ship. Sorry, sorry. Had to steal ship. Sorry, sorry, had to steal ship. Sorry, sorry, yeah. had to steal ship. Daddy daughter dagger dance. Yeah, these sorry, are... sorry, Daddy had to steal ship. Dance. Sorry, sorry, had to steal ship. Daddy daughter dagger dance. I, I, haven't, I haven't bothered to practice these. For so the audience at home, what you don't realize this is uh, these these Pretty periods. Good. In addition to being entertaining, these are good opportunities for Jesse and I to get sort of like our own little mini break. Yeah. <laughs> in between Please, the let me support my number one Orion Amiga. Breaks. Let me support my number one Orion Amiga. Check the headlines. Let me support my number one Orion Amiga. Let me support my number one Orion Amiga. I know she's saying Amiga as in like a friend, but it makes me think of the Amiga like computer yeah i know right, right that was you a, strict a hilarious ancient system you strict people you strict people a lot of it you strict people a lot of it you strict people some of the funniest lot parts yes. you strict daddy people? daughter dagger dance daddy daughter dagger dance daddy daughter you dagger dance people? daddy daughter dagger dance daddy daughter dagger dance daddy daughter dagger dance okay so the daddy daughter dagger dance okay, the, so the, 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 uh, the daughter dagger dance yeah was an instant where an instance where mariner was accidentally stabbed yeah, there were four instances. She, yeah, exactly. Right. She kept getting stabbed. Yeah, in the I same know. Place. It was funny because in the first one, 
um, in the bar Slip, Slit Throat was the first time when um, Tenny was greeted by her friend. Madam G. Um, yeah. No, Madam G was like, no, this that wasn't Madam G. I think that was in Greta or something. Well, in the bar when she got stabbed, uh, the bartender said, oh, and this is from Madam G. And then the then the knife came and Tendi back, backed up and it went into Mariner. Yeah. I thought, well, who was her friend? Who who was her friend person that they were like when she was like, let's get brunch later. That was the same person. That was Madam G. That wasn't Madam like, G. I'm not gonna was call it? Was yeah, that? Yeah. I thought Madam. I thought Madam G was like an old, an elder kind of person. Was it? No, yeah. that was at the bar. Okay. The old lady. No, that the older, was at another. That was, that was at the at the moan bar. The, the moan mo- bar. The moan but I thought, dungeon. No, oh, the moan dungeon. No, Madam G was 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 older, right? No, I don't think was so. Madam G that young, the young yeah, one. Yeah, she, she mentioned going to high school with her. Okay, okay, yeah. you're probably right. You're probably she right. She was dressed okay. as Madam G. Yes. Okay, I will, I will, I will Madam submit. G. Um, submit. So <laughs> you will submit. Submit. <laughs> you will submit. Sir. So, but it was funny because she—that's how she was greeting Tendy was by throwing a knife at her essentially, yeah. and then Tendy dodged it. And went into Mariner. The next time, oh yeah, the next time it was in Greta that threw the knife, but she threw it at Talin. Yeah. This time, because Talin insult, <laughs> insulted him, as she interpreted, this time yeah. Talin dodged it and Mariner yeah. got it. The Vulcan's third, always going to dodge. And the it. third time was De- Erica threw it at Tendi, and Tendi dodged. It didn't go at Mariner, but it bounced off the wall. Yeah. And, it went at Mariner. Yeah, and, the, and the fourth time was funny because this was like the rule of threes, but then the fourth time. It was like off camera. It was off camera. Yeah. We just heard about it, and um, of course it was during. The daddy daughter dagger dance yeah, so that made absolutely. it funnier so that was that was that was i thought that was that gag was put together pretty well people did know. notice very totally rapidly dog. on the internet there's already an errata uh, oh uh, no what an errata yeah an errata That's like er- it's at, er- erotica no oh, not this is not this is an a standard E-R-R. errata this is not an uh, this is not an erotic erotica yeah, no an erotic E-R-R-A. it's not an erotic errata it's a regular old errata <laughs> okay which was in the bar, they also had the additional clever joke, not quite a hat on a hat, but maybe getting close, where... Was it an ass hat? No. Is an ass hat a hat made out of ass or a hat for your ass? I believe we went over this in like episode which, 79 I think we went off which hat? Which hat are you wearing now, sir? I am not wearing a hat. I'm wearing, You're wearing an ass hat. Oh no, Jesse's discovering pieces of shit about me. <laughs> Are you sure we, because sometimes I think you accuse me of saying something already, but it's really a conversation we had off mic, and the audience wouldn't be aware of that. I find it interesting that you chose the the uh, adjective, verb, adverb, it's not really an adverb, but you, 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 you chose the word accuse, as opposed to, say, describe... Well, I'd say it's a reference. No, I say it's an accusation because you're like, you already said that already, dude. Get the fucking out of here with your bullshit. I think I (laughs) took an adversarial position. I don't. Patrick most certainly did. I I don't think my tone reflects. So maybe I should. You know, I think it was just. It was just. You know, it's all good. No, I mean, when you say, like, you already said that, man, that's that implies an adversarial nature. It does not necessarily... Maybe in your world. It well, no, no, no. <laughs> when you accuse somebody of saying, you said that already, you're basically saying, don't say anymore because you already said that. That's what you're saying. <laughs> no, I'm not crazy for thinking no, that. No, no, How many you're times... crazy. I'm the crazy one. No, I, I, For not predicting no. my, my attempt... <laughs> No, no. To how, save time. No, how often? Not referencing something we've discussed before. How often do you say? How <laughs> Would often, not in fact backfire. How? how Which how, it has. When you say you said that already, do you mean to say keep saying it? No, you're saying don't say that because you've said that already. I'm exactly, and I'm freely admitting now that whatever strategy I had initially failed, it backfired, and uh, we can we can get back to talking. My point was, is, are you sure Sorry. we didn't say it off mic? I have no, I have no idea. I'm guessing we might have said it on mic, but I don't know. We, we talk a lot on mic and off mic. Sometimes it's the two conflate in my mm-hmm. mind. Mm-hmm. That is true. That is a fair point. <laughs> now he's trying to put a fire out. He sees the, he sees the smoke. He sees the smoke, and now he's just trying to like, no, don't start that fire. He's gonna, he's gonna whiz. Get the blanket. Get that thick blanket. <laughs> yeah. Not the duvet. Jesus. Oh. Um, Anyway, you well, were, were. I don't remember what I was. Saying. Uh, speaking of, it's probably not that important. I'm talking about the. Uh, oh yeah, the the I know what I was saying. The errata. The oh, errata. errata. The erotic. Not errata. Erot- not erotica. You know, thinking back, it could be that it's erotic in some circles. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to kink shame anybody if this happens to be erotic for you. Uh, you strict people. In the in the bar, <laughs> when Mariner first gets stabbed with the throwing throwing knife stabbed, mm-hmm. and then she takes the knife out, and they the bartender just is casually holding out a bowl full of knives, oh. <laughs> and Mariner says, "I don't even mind. It's you know it's part of the whole ambiance or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's a funny joke, mm-hmm. except uh oh, 
Except oh, no. they're in an Orion bar. It's populated by only Orions. Why are all the knives in the bucket have the red blood on them? All the knives oh. are covered in red blood. Like oh, human do they blood. have green do you think that was a mis- Do you think that was a mistake? Or do you I think, think that was a mistake. I don't think orange, I think Orions have orange, some other kind of blood. blood. Yellow blood. I, uh, maybe, maybe you could say maybe we don't know 100%. But I they got know. purple blood. I didn't find this. I didn't notice that. I read it on IMDb, which I'm given to understand stands for the Internet Movie Database. And they had a little section. Hell yeah. called, I've heard that's true. Like errors or errors or whatever. Errata. Errata. Errata error. Erotic errata. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes, anyway, that was one thing that some people noticed. Mm-hmm. Potentially problematic. Those yeah. people suck. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was thinking back to the beats. And the problem with this software is I can't press two buttons at the same time. I can press one right after the other. And so it's really hard to make beats when you can't press two of them at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm just... I'm just... I wasn't able to make... monophonic, I baby. wasn't... I wasn't able to make... A, well, it's sort... It's not serial real, instead of parallel. Yeah, yeah, in a way. Because you can still play them on top of each other. You just can't execute them at the exact same time. But you can still play them over top. But they can be like a millisecond apart? Yeah, so I can play... Give us a demonstration. So I can do this... Good thi- sir. So I can do this... Daddy, sorry, daughter, daddy, sorry, daddy, 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 da
<laughs> what, well, yeah, what did I say? <laughs> I you you, cu- you accused, or, I'm sorry, not accused. <laughs> You made the you you discovered you made the the assertion that we would be into Lyndon Johnson, and I was like, uh, I, don't I think know. that was one of the options, and I've, I there was somebody else. Okay, hmm. um, who would I be? In a, I would be um, I don't know, someone like really cool. I'd I be guess. Freddie Mercury. I'd be a Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, that's what I'd be as a Tyrannosaurus. All that's right. great. That's, that's pretty that's, cool. That's good. Yeah. Would you be a feathered one or one of them fancy yeah. made up? You got ones? them little hands. I'd be one of the made up ones from the early books. <laughs> the early books. I don't know what that means. You got all those. Do you mean that book from the nineteen eighties that had like pictures of yeah, dinosaurs? Yeah, this like, is this, photographs this, of dinosaurs. Yeah, this is. We actually did have this, walking among giants. We actually we gone. actually did have this conversation on the podcast. Before. Are you going to Chompus? Chompus. <laughs> is that like Krampus? <laughs> it's like the chomp is the tyrannosaurus. Krampus. Krampus. Is Chompus? No, we actually. No, Chompus it's rules. Like Chompus. We actually did on an earlier podcast. We did have a conversation about nineteen. Krampus Lauf. We had a conversation about an early or nineteen eighties drawings of dinosaurs that children read and were educated upon and looked totally different than what we have now. Yeah. So yeah. yes, I would be one of those. We did have that conversation, so I can That's, I can say uh, that sounds right definitively sorry, that we yes. have discussed this before. Yes. But yes, I would be one of those. I would not challenge that assertion. Mm-hmm. What would you be, Patrick? I well, I already said what I'd be. I'd be yeah. Freddie Mercury. Oh yeah, you did at uh, Live Aid or no at Wembley. Mm-hmm. He well, seemed to be having a good time at what Wembley. What was the question? You asked the question, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what would you be, Jesse? <laughs> That's right. He's one of those people who asks questions but then doesn't answer them on his behalf. You never absolutely tell. belong on the crime throne. <laughs> Crime throne. Um, uh, so we we don't get an answer from Jesse. This is not fair. Well, he can he can think about his answer for a little bit. Okay, think about your answer. Please, well, we Jesse. talk about maybe I'll answer the next episode. We, well, okay. Let's talk yeah, about. You got to keep him one more. You got to tease it out. Yeah. <laughs> we we uh, we got to talk about the things we haven't yet discussed about this episode. There's a lot. There's a lot. At least on my list, there's a lot. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> moan heads. I like the you know the pheromone Blast me with more moans. The pheromone heads and they're, yeah. they're the moan heads. M O N E. Yeah. Uh, uh... Learn a little bit more about that. And all I have is my stink. That was gross. <laughs> oh, no. How many knots can you tie? Uh, that was good too. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but with the pheromone thing, it was interesting because there was a Lick clarif- my foot. They clarified something, and I think we discussed this a few seasons back because we've covered all the lower decks from right the right at the beginning. Um, we talked about how Tendi mentioned that not all Orions do the whole pheromone thing, yeah. which the which was the implication they introduced in Enterprise because in Enterprise they had Cat Marcher and other men. It was we it was an episode called Bounty, and we discussed that episode we long did. ago. Go go look up our episodes. I don't know, not but, that long ago. It was a long. It was fairly long ago, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this is the debate Jesse and I have a long-standing debate Jesse and I have is like how how long ago did we do the episode Bounty? <laughs> uh, it's a problematic episode, but uh, this is of Enterprise. Yeah, that it was the one where the the Orion quote unquote Orion slave girls. It turns out mm. oh they use pheromones to control the men and and blah, it turned blah, blah. and then it, there was a joke on this episode yes and the thing was is that earlier in i think it was season one or whatever yeah uh, they were talking about how it was made up but then it was actually not that it was made up tendy because that was that, well, that, that's what tendy kind of said they no, said that in starfleet made that up is what tendy no but she didn't and that's what that's why i found it interesting that they're they're kind of uh the show was was entering into the conversation with fans here uh in the sense that when tendy originally talked about that she said not all orions do that Mm-hmm. Or like not all of us do that, or something to that effect. Well, okay, this but is a look, lot of fans interpreted that as her saying it was totally made up. Well, okay, this is the line that I think Mariner said. Mariner said Mariner uh, says that. Not yeah, Tendi. Yeah. Tendi yeah, corrects her. Uh, okay, Mariner, Mariner mis just for the just for the record, so we have it all documented. Mariner <laughs> said Tendi's made it clear that Starfleet made those pheromones up, and then she says, "I mean, they had to explain why a captain would get taken out by some Orion sugar." I don't know who said that. Um, Mariner said that. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, th- um, and then, yeah, Tendi says, uh, technically I said that not all Orion control men with pheromones. Some of us definitely do, just not me. Okay. Well. And the, uh, you're reading, is that script from Chakotea.net? No, because Chakotea doesn't have the newer episodes. This oh, is just a transcript web. Yeah, this is just a transcript. Yeah, you've mentioned of, this yeah. before. This is another, another mm-hmm. thing we've discussed before. Mm-hmm. That, one, that one's on me. 
It's unfortunate because Chacoteo also is not HTTPS. It's only HTTP. Which oh, so your out. browser freaks out every time? Yeah, but Maybe I'm Chacoteo. sure it's fine. Maybe Chacoteo.net is I'm not stealing se- all your info. I mean, I'm not sending them any data unless they're somehow stealing my data. Maybe they're, they're scoping yeah. out your, your machine. Well, they're not trying to d- install Your workstation. Music. Maybe. But they're, I still use them. They're creeping into your workstation. They just get with the time. They're scraping your workstation, Dan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um... Scrape station. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like thinking about that. <laughs> It's that, pretty gross. Is that like an area of a spa? Oh, like uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. It was something to do with feet and <laughs> genitals. And like, like, you, can, yeah. you can go over here or yeah. you can go to the scrape station. Uh, Meet me um, at the gra- scrape station. So speaking it's of- It's right next to the crepe station. Right after lunch. <laughs> How do you think they made the crepes? <laughs> get your crepes and get your scrapes. <laughs> speaking of enterprise- <laughs> Perkins, Gherkins, I was Jer- never speaking of it. I we were speaking. No, about. I was actually. Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Let's go back on. Tendy that. says I might not be a pirate, but I've all but I've rerouted my fair share of EPS conduits. Now we talked about Stormfront recently, the Enterprise episode, and that episode they referenced EPS conduits twice. I bet they. The did. first time they said Enterprise's EPS conduits got fried. I think that was when Silic fried it, and Trip Tucker was like, "They fried our EPS conduits." And then Trip, Trip Tucker, Tucker the, the Trip, third. Tri- Trip Tucker Charles Trip Tucker the. Th- Third. Yeah, Charles Trip Tucker the third. Yeah, Cap to Paul, Florida to, man to Paul, to Paul. I just don't, uh, Captain, Captain. Where would I stay? <laughs> uh, That's great. Um, but then the second time, Connor <laughs> <laughs> Trenier is like a national treasure. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, I had no doubt about that. Um, but then later in that same episode, the shuttle also crashed because. The, con- the EPS conduit didn't get fried. It got fused. And that's when t- uh, Trip Tucker III and Mayweather landed on Earth. So they were ta- we were just talking about... I was just thinking about how in that episode they kept talking about EPS conduits. And here they go talking about... So EPS I'm, conduits is always coming. That's up. what I'm saying. It leads me, to believe, that it's, it leads me to believe it's always around. It's just like a They're thing. always talking about those EPS conduits. You got EPS your EPS conduits. conduits. You got your isolinear rods what and is or chips. What is an EPS conduit? <laughs> An EPS conduit was a part of Starship's propulsion systems. The conduit would take small amounts of plasma from the warp core or impulse engines and redirect it throughout the ship for use in powering other systems. Speaking of plasma, remember when Boimler had to clean <laughs> up when Boimler had to clean up the holodecks? Do you think that was alien plasma he was cleaning up from those holodecks a couple no. episodes ago? Uh, I, mean, I think that was the, alien plasma okay. from, because of their hollow suites. You know what they do in the hollow suites? Well, there's aliens <laughs> on the crew, if that's what you mean. But the humans are also on the crew. Yeah, but it was there's green. A lot more I know, but it was was green and you know what they do on hollow suites they they fuck on the hollow suites and so i'm saying it's who, plasma who does in quarks hollow suites they fuck quarks. and so i'm wondering what the holodeck shit that boimler was cleaning up yeah. and it was green so i was like well that's not all human plasma it must be an amalgamation of different now you're talking about species plasma plasma <laughs> i mean why are, you pla- why are you calling it plasma because it's that's what it is it's plasma it's not, it's not plasma yes are plasma you, uh... it's plasma you're crazy yeah it's another word for you know you're goofy uh next next important <laughs> things uh because this podcast can't go on forever contrary oh, to popular I belief hope not so um, the human seminal plasma. Seminal oh. plasma. It's a thing. It refers to semen. Plasma. That's what I was referring to. Oh, you meant semen. Yes, that's what I meant. Seminal. I thought you were talking about like blood plasma. No, seminal because no, because, plasma. Be because they have sex in, in quarks, hollow sweets, so they leave. Yeah, but they have sex in all sorts of holodecks, not just the, quarks. And that's the point I was making, which is why Boimler was- I just don't co- know why you're bringing up quark at all. No, the because the, the reason I was saying, because plasma, I was just reminded when I used the word plasma, mm. and I was reminded how Boimler had to clean up the hollow sweets, and he was cleaning up all this green shit, and I was like, what is that green shit? And I was like, it's the plasma of multiple aliens. Plasma is semen. Remember <laughs> Quark's Plasma is semen. Remember remember Quark's hollow sweet? That's what I'm not getting. Soylent no, Soylent if, Green you would, is semen. if you would stop and listen to what I say for a moment, it would make sense to you, but you're not listening. No, I get it. Plasma is semen. And there, I get but it but now. then you're like, why were you talking about hollow sweets? Is I was talking about it because you were like, what are you talking about, semen? And I was like, <laughs> Remember Quark's hollow suites? They're always fucking in there, so they were probably fucking in this one too, uh, and they were creating I get it, plasma. I get it, I get it, I get it. You just listen, it's very easy. No, no. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 what, was 
<laughs> so I'm trying to read my list, but I'm giggly. So my eyes are all squinty. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm all giggly. I got well, giggly, I no squ- doubt about that. squinty eyes. So I'm trying to look at my notes here. Where um, would I stay? <laughs> uh, I like that Talyn is curious and kind. She's yeah. a kind person. Mm-hmm. We we are learning more and more about Talyn, even as she's just sort of uh, hanging out or assisting or bouncing off of other people. But Talyn's a good addition to the yeah. Team. She's she's excellent. she's inspired. She inspired Boimler last episode and this episode was Tendi. She yeah. of course has the yeah. very famous not famous <laughs> famous soon to be famous no, I thought an impactful line that Dan probably has uh, recorded and that uh, I've, prob- there's, there's, I've probably put it at the front of this episode because it's the one that makes sense to put it at the front I, of this episode. I don't episode. think I did. I think there's only a couple of them. Well, it's the one where she says, uh, you know, you, you are who you get to, who you choose to be, you know, like you don't, you're not told what you are kind are of thing. You, it's you, all a, about Tendi being able to pick her identity because Tendi was saying you saw the real me mm-hmm. and they're like trying to explain, no, it's <laughs> That's not the real you. That's what society is trying to put on you. The real you is the science nerd right. on the Cerritos, the Starfleet, Starfleet, the Starfleet lieutenant. But their emotional closeness is unpleasant. No, it wasn't that one. No, that was not the inspiring, <laughs> <laughs> inspiring no, you're right. emotional line. Um, they're they're doing another thing with Talyn where they're having a fun Talyn line. Um, last time the fun Talyn line was when she was talking about when they were talking about Tuvok and Tuvix. She was like. Is it, um, is it, is it, oh, what was the word Sparse she- or whatever. She, oh, I can't remember the word she is his, uh, he was, she was referring to his quarters. Yeah, his quarters. Are um, his, are his uh, quarters sufficiently or particularly yeah. that was Spartan, the, maybe. She Spartan? Said. She yeah. Spartan or uh, Spartan, something She didn't, like she's, uh, she said, um. Are they austere? That's austere. what they say. Austere. austere. Yeah, that's, that's the one that's a better said. word. That's why they're professional writers. They right. come up with words like austere. Right. And so that was a, like, that was, t- that was Talyn being fun. She's like, oh, is it austere? I can't wait. I but, thought you were going to bring up her whole water obsession. Well, the, well, no, I wasn't. What I, well, okay. Yes. Okay. Look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's okay. do it. Let's okay. Let's. <laughs> oh my God, my computer's going crazy. Um, okay, let's do it. Um, <laughs> I've caused I've caused some problem for you. I've yeah. just referenced to Lynn's the the running gag. There is a clear running gag. Okay, that so is this is this, water. this She's is a hydro homie. So this is the fun to Lynn line. I hope we will be allowed to view their aquifers. Precisely. Yes, yes she right. She wants to review. And last in the last episode, she ordered uh, water, room temperature, room temperature. Water. I think that was the last episode. Or mm-hmm. I think in pretty much every episode, she there's some joke with her and water. Yeah, and she's that, always drinking water. And and the and the other joke, the one of the joke that I take from it is like there's always this moment of her like showing her true fun side, and her fun side obviously yeah. is very you know kind of plain. Even bo- I, I didn't record it, but even Mariner after she said that, Mariner was saying something like, "Ah, oh, Lynn's having fun." Or or something like that. What was the line? It was, uh, I can look it up for you. Talyn's it was, uh, oh, okay, wild. Talyn getting rowdy. That's what Mariner rowdy, said yeah. after she yeah. said that. So basically, Talyn, Talyn was getting rowdy. Yeah, so the between room temperature, water, um, being psyched about austere quarters and uh, the aquifers, uh, yes, uh, Talyn is a party animal. <laughs> As we all know. Um, I liked that Tendi's family, uh, the whole deal was that Tendi's family was maybe a little annoyed or or disappointed or whatever in, t- in Tendi not fulfilling her expected social and familial role. But she wasn't like uh, disowned or anything, right? Mm-hmm. I think we so often see these stories where it's like, oh, my family disowned me because I chose this other path or whatever. And they're not doing that here. That's great. It's it's like, no, there's still, there's, you can have a family where people are not like 100% jibing with each other, but they still love each other and care for each yeah, other. Yeah, it's, well, she sort of like tried to disown her own family. Exactly. It was they're, more they're coming like, from the opposite direction. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which you'll probably do less of after the events of this episode yeah. and after the yeah. advice of Talyn to say, hey, you know, you can be whoever you want to be. And that includes interacting with whoever you want to be and having relationships with your sister, etc. So I was a little bit, well, it was fine. It wasn't a big deal. But when, when uh, Tendi and De Erica were fighting, Tendi, uh, uh, they were talking about like, De Erica was like, Tendi was the, uh, well, I can't remember the, the, the prime, the, the prime, but also the constellation blade child or whatever. Yes, it was. The w- winter, winter yeah. goddess. She had a cool yeah. sword. And Tendi, and Tendi, t- and Tendi goes, I didn't ask for that. And De Erica says, neither did I. And then De Erica says, you forced this on me without asking running to Starfleet was your choice, but it meant all your duties fell on me. Duties. The issue I had with that is like, yes, it was Tendi's choice, just like it could have been to Erica's choice 
to like leave as well. And so I thought that thought that, that was like a little bit of a weak argument on Erica's part. I disagree. I think it's an actually very, I, I'm not taking a position necessarily on the argument. Um, I think it's an interesting thing to point out that yes, it's, uh, it's of course important for you to carve out your own identity and you should, but that doesn't mean there won't necessarily be an impact on other people. And in this yeah, case, so- and it is not, I, I, I wouldn't argue that that means you shouldn't do it, but it's more about be aware that that's that you don't live in an you're not an isolated system right but, you're you're in a web of people and relationships right but 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 what Tendi pointed out and actually even before that uh, well leading up to that and into that uh they uh, uh De Erica was like I didn't ask for that this yeah. and Tendi said I didn't ask for it either neither of them asked for it Tendi made the choice to leave uh, it did fall. Her actions did have an effect yeah. on Erica for sure. But like Tendi has nothing to apologize for that, and she did. And she, and no, Erica, I think what and Deirica, the apology was. Erica really has no reason to be mad at Tendi. It's I, not I, fair. I disagree because the I think it was made clear in the episode that the whole point, what what uh, Tendi was apologizing for, was not so much leaving, but not even having a conversation with her sister that it was going to happen. The implication is she's just like, fuck y'all, I'm out of here. And so did her sister have any chance to prepare mentally? Did she have any choice in the matter at all? And again, I don't necessarily disagree with your your position that, yeah, Tendi has every right to do what she needs to do. I do like the idea that they've brought up that you, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't at least consider and take it and maybe make some adjustments or whatever. I would, I would, I would say yes. Otherwise you're being selfish. Potentially. Okay. I would, I would, I would say that yes, Tendi should have at least said, yeah. gave her some warning, but beyond that, she didn't. Oh shit. I think it's an, it, I think where, where, the, where I have a critique of this, this section of the storyline is just that it's an, such an interesting idea, but they didn't give it any time to be examined. Mm. Right. There was no plot examining it there was no just there was not even any exposition really examining it it was just a real quick dialogue which works it's great but uh, it is a really interesting thought because i think it's a nuanced difference it depends what what i what what decision you're making it's not as simple as like i wanted to join this organization and i joined this organization it would be a very different story for example if somebody was leaving their family because their family disagreed with say their sexual orientation or something like that. That's a different storyline than uh, I have these career options and I've selected this particular career option. Uh, It's not no less important necessarily, but I'm just saying like there's so much that could be discussed Mm -hmm. there that in an hour long traditional episode, they could have gone into more and shown more of the different sides and pluses and minuses. I would have, Uh, I would have been more, I would have been more interested in, I mean, I would have been interested to, to have more opportunity to explore like the Tendi to Erica relationship. That was, that is the part that that I would have, because like, like I said, yes, she should have said something, but beyond that to me. Like she should have been aware that it was going to have an effect and she should have said something. But beyond that, you know, I don't know, but you're right. Yes. There was other aspects of that. that They they, they could have explored as well if they have more It's an interesting debate, but the debate to to have any meaningful debate on it, you just have to understand the context much better. And I agree with you, understand what their existing relationship was more context around the uh, societal expectations in Orion culture and the family and pluses and minuses and all that other stuff like that. Again, I'm not taking a particular position on it. My, my default position would be like, fuck you all. I'm going to do what I want. But I also respect and find intriguing the idea of saying, okay, well, okay. If that's the baseline, there are all these like little potential caveats that you go in there. If you want to be a Mm. good person (laughs) Mm. and and not be, uh, potentially be selfish and not Mm. causing harm to other people because of doing something you want to do. Even, even if you're fully justified in wanting to do that. Uh, we didn't get to see that in this right. episode because I mean, this there's is a more brief comedic thing. Yeah. They sort of, they sort I mean, of ulti- hint at it. Ultimately, nothing should have prevented Tendi from leaving. Ultimately, that should be her, her choice. And that she shouldn't feel guilty about leaving. She should just feel guilty. No, about- I can imagine a number of scenarios where you could feel guilty no, I about understand, leaving. No, I understand why she would feel guilty. <laughs> what if the guilty? government murdered her family? No, <laughs> like, no I'm know, not like, saying... It would no, look, I know we're all, we're all, we all have emotions and stuff. Yes, we feel guilty about things sometimes reasonably sometimes unreasonably sometimes it's hard to decipher just saying like just to repeat again what i kind of just said already twice is that ultimately it was her choice and she shouldn't she shouldn't feel bad but she should have she should have mentioned it that's your position that's a very good position my point is there is a number of other 
potentially defensible positions that we can't really investigate because they haven't given us enough time and information to really have that conversation in a meaningful way, because that context really does matter for these types of uh, plot lines and philosophical examinations of exactly this question is like, what is the, what is the role? There is no right or wrong answer. It's a philosophical question and people are going to line up on, on various different sides. And my answer is the right answer. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) My subjective I, answer is is objectively truth, and that's I, I. People say that shit a lot. They're like, "This is objectively good." It's yeah. like, what the fuck? What does that even mean? Uh, like, I'm just, I'm just uh, saying. Yeah. Uh, but exactly, in order to avoid that, it's become hyperbole. We don't we don't get the opportunity. Like this show, sometimes just Square like T A S. Sometimes they 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 touch they touch the edges of some really interesting philosophical stuff. It's in there, but there's not the time, and the format just kind of doesn't necessarily fit some of that. They can still get pretty fucking touching and pretty fucking interesting hey, hey jesse do you, <laughs> want, do you want to touch my edges do you want to touch my hey jesse what are you what, what are you this doing this is that character that dan keeps trying to make happen <laughs> touch your what and you everyone's want, like that character's not gonna happen dan you, you want to touch my edges jesse <laughs> your edges you want, you want to touch my hey jesse what are you doing do you have time to touch my edges i'm doing a podcast <laughs> Um, well, mistress of the winter constellations yes, we find out we don't we didn't really know why she was called that before they just gave a side reference to that in previous episode yeah. right now we know more. now we know more about it a little bit a little bit all right uh let's talk about that ship you know it's this uh, i call it the series arc get it <sighs> a-r-k the, se- the season arc the mysterious ship the that, season arc that fucks everybody over. she's the tip of the moonlit blade she was the be, she's she she's the tip of the moonlit the tip of the moonlit blade now, is now is it moonlit wait, or is it, it moonlit it's moonlit tip of the moonlit blade is the greatest duty of the mistress of the winter constellation being yeah. the tip of the moonlit mm-hmm. blade <laughs> you like you keep saying the word tip tip of the moonlit not <laughs> let did it again tip of the that being the tip of the moonlit blade Indeed. is the greatest duty of the mistress of the winter constellations mm-hmm. we are learning so much Excellent. okay you were talking about arc and made a funny joke related to that not uh, that funny it was not actually that funny a joke at all uh the the, the ship the little white ship that keeps, <laughs> <laughs> that keeps zapping people um oh the ship yeah the zap ship First they, of all, I don't think I'm starting to buy into the argument that's uh, surfaced on the internet in various places that uh, the ship is not killing these people. I, I'm I'm starting to buy into that argument. I don't. I mean, okay, I will, it makes it look like they're like being vaporized. Yeah, it makes I it think, look like, and it looks like they're like being like melted away. Uh, I think unless that's light yeah, time time space trickery or something. I think I think they're being beamed away or turned into holograms i don't know whether there's something it's just happening. a very messy beam I think we're Hologram? gonna see all, <laughs> holograms i think we're gonna see all these people again i holograms it, it, hologram <laughs> as we've seen previously in lower decks their their vibe tends to be more 90s trek style where you usually don't have some sort of um crazy antagonist or whatever it's it's more it's not uh, discovery yeah it's it, it, well yeah, yeah it's not like the, the it's, uni- not the, it's, it's not, not the like universe a, ending it's, galaxy it's, and it's, it's not like some like neighboring galaxies attacking this galaxy yeah. <laughs> and discovery is good it's just it's that's a tense show it's intense every every every, every <laughs> season is very intense the uh, galaxy Emotionally uni- the universe is falling apart in every uh, in every uh season kind of in discovery but i Pretty think intense. i think i yeah. think they're probably going to end it's going to be one of those more star trekky endings to this season where who knows maybe they are an antagonist but i i think i'm thinking they're not an antagonist as in they're murdering all these people all on these low level ships it's going to turn out to be there's going to be some twist i want i want to see uh, a callback <laughs> to the center of the galaxy people from uh the barkley episode uh that's what I want to see, but, but that's not them. They brought people to the them. nth degree. Nth degree is the name of that episode. So we discussed that episode yep. on the It's Got Star Trek podcast. We did. So do you think? Do you think these guys are going to be a new alien that we've never heard of before, or do you think it's going to be no, an old I, I, alien? I, that I that I couldn't tell you. That mm-hmm. I think is a is a trickier thing to determine. Tell me if you think this is an inconsistency with that scene. The ship was going away from them, all normal horizontal ship style, and then the shot cut to the Orions, and then when it cut back to the vessel, it was suddenly all vertical style we didn't see the transition from it going horizontal i think it's some ferengi i think okay that that, that's not what i asked but (laughs) (laughs) my question was 
do you do you think that that's a continuity error that they didn't show it transition from horizontal to vertical? If you watch it, it's horizontal. It cuts to the Orion. It cuts back to him, and suddenly it's vertical. I, I think know, that might be a continuity. We error. already know, we've already seen this thing, and we know what it does. Yeah, so yeah. It's just I, a, I mean, yeah, maybe they did, maybe they just had to cut some cut a few seconds because yeah. it does yeah. come down to that. Yeah. That's a, that's that's viable. Um, Frangi, uh, what was your question about the Frangi? I don't think it's the Frangi, Jesse. You don't think it's the Frangi? I don't. Who think do you so. think? Who 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 do you think? Do you think they're like? Uh, well, why would they be collecting people like that? You know, maybe they're collecting them for one of them uh, menageries. Do you for profit? Do you for one of for one of the thousand top one thousand menageries in the galaxy? Do the Orions have any insignia that we know about? I am Alpha Quadrant. I am asking because yeah, they got some insignia. So they didn't do the thing in the in with the Klingons and the Romulans where when they blew the ship yeah. up, they showed the ship with the insignia close up. They but didn't this time. They showed the captain's chair. They didn't show the insignia. They didn't yeah. follow that same pattern with showing a, a piece of sh- ship shrapnel with the insignia on it. So I was wondering if we just have never seen a decent Orion. Insignia before. Well, so I know that's we've why seen they do it. Orion writing. I think there's some Orion insignia. But, there, but I, I don't yeah. know that we've ever seen a, on their ship like a like a yeah. like a flag type uh, thing. So I don't know why they didn't show it this time. I don't know. Maybe we, they were like, this joke's old. We we gotta we don't need to do that again. Um the Chalnoth, who who's what was his name? Kakarak? Kakor. Kakur. Kakor. Kakor. I am from South Chalnoth. Yeah. yeah. He was a uh, reference to TNG's Allegiance. Mm. Which I think was a season three episode. That's the one where Picard gets kidnapped with the other aliens for some observational experiments. Yeah, uh, and and there's that Chalnoth character named. Pray Ethan, I don't change my mind. Named Isak, uh, but this guy, this guy was he was a bonsai eating motherfucker. Uh, yes, yes, you body. are very intimidating. When he said, "Pray I don't change my mind," it's kind of like that's kind of a that's a, that's it's, he's not taking any responsibility for his actions when he says something like that. He's like, "Pray that I don't change my mind." Like I don't have control over it. Only the gods have control yeah. over what my mind does. I mean, yeah. So you have to pray that I. It's like, well, just don't do it, man. Just I shouldn't have to pray. Just don't do it. Okay. But that's okay. just a way of talking tough. He's just yeah, talking tough. Those types don't usually follow through. You can be assholes out there man. he's just talking tough he's you just like some assholes out there in like, the real world he's like you better hope that i don't change my mind it's like well it's up to you man change your mind or don't but don't tell me to pray to a god that you won't change for your real. mind There's take some assholes out you there. have some take some agency have some responsibility for your actions don't don't blame others for your actions just don't do it uh yeah, yeah. there was a character named zoto on the Orion ship, that's the one that gets zapped by the mysterious ship. Blast me with more moans! Oh, no, I guess that was she, a different I guess Orion. She, I guess she was the first officer, because uh, the captain's trying to, you know, order the uh, the mysterious ship down. The first officer was designed to look exactly uh, like Naomi from The Expanse, Naomi Nagata. Oh, interesting. Uh, I mean, it had to be on purpose, because mm-hmm. it was so so identical, her character design. Whoa! Maybe I'll get some of those, too! <laughs> Maybe I you. will <laughs> when I take over a ship. Was it was right now? I'm just a plunder sorter, but I'm capable of no, way I really, more. I got really got that one guy a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you really like that one. They look yeah. awesome. That was different. I was trying to find if I had any, any sound clips of of her. I guess I didn't. She only said one or two mm-hmm. very brief things. Uh, any other thoughts? Any other odds and ends? Any other comments? Any nah. other sound effects? Um, Otherwise, we can call it a show. Uh, I thought it was fucked up that Freeman presented Tendi's trip to Orion as a present, but really they were just using her for political purposes. She was, yeah, she was, that's yeah that, was, that was part of the course. Yeah. Um, what the fuck is a raisin rat? I looked it up, and the closest thing I found was a, it's a kind of food item that people make. A uh, raisin rat? That, it's a rat made out of raisins it's a rat made out of raisins um yeah the um a cool duvet keeps the raisin rats away yeah the raisin rats yeah because he grew up on a vineyard that made raisins i know and he's talking about raisin rats and i looked up raisin rats and the best i got were recipes for a a pastry called a raisin rat but Uh, i think there's just raisins that come in each what about when you're just raisin rats you know maybe like a rat farm you're raising rats it's like what is you what is your profession good sir well, I'm raising rats. Well, then that sentence. A cool duvet keeps the raisin rats away. So you're keeping the act of raising yeah. rats away by. Yeah, by I mean, it's what's a, cool a, what's a duvet? Context of that line. I get it. It's a joke. There's there's raisin on a raisin farm. There's rats. The raisin duvet rats. is like a thick blanket. Oh. I know. I know what a duvet is. No, but J- Jesse, asked, Jesse asked. Jesse oh. asked what a duvet I didn't is. know. You didn't know what a duvet no, is. Jesse no. sleeps on a fucking burlap sack. Jesse, Civil you, War style. Jesse, you know all sorts of stuff that I don't know. Like yeah, all about. That's that's the thing. That's. 
That's the thing. Jesse, Jesse sleeps on a pile of bricks. Yeah, man. Um, lightly covered in, in corn flour. Um, we find out that Andorians have like really nice um, sheets. Sheets. So their mm. their materials are good, which I looked on uh, um, Alpha Alpha Memory uh, Alpha uh, Memory Alpha, and, and this is a new this is a new piece of canon starting yeah. at this episode. Oh. Um, yeah, raisin rats. Um, there was something else I was going to say about something, but now I can't really remember what it is, but I'm sure it was really Some important. Some people argue that it may not be important if you can't quite remember it. I just think my brain forgets things. Well, if it forgot it, then... I know, I know that argument. I don't well, know how, how about how about we do the old Murphy's Law thing where I attempt to end the show, and then <laughs> oh, halfway yeah. through it, you'll be like, "Oh yeah, I remember." Oh yeah, I remember. And then you'll you'll introduce us to whatever this idea was, and then you'll Burnt. apologize for it not being as exciting as you thought it may have been. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Well. So that about does it for us this week on the It's Got Star Trek podcast. That has been the two hundred and seventh episode of the of the Star Trek. It was the Star Trek podcast. Of the Star Trek. Yeah, it's got Star Trek podcast. No, now you're stressing me out because, like, I'm trying to remember. What, what, next week. No. Next week. Oh, oh, I remember. I remember. <laughs> next, I remember. Next week. I remember. Uh, I remember. Uh, and it's week. super important. <laughs> we will discuss. Oh, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> oh, Dan, did you remember? I remember. <laughs> did that work? I remember. <laughs> you look so pleased with yourself. <laughs> When Tendi was being carried around on that, that portable couch thing, yeah. she referred to it as a sedan. Even though it's a litter. Isn't it a litter? Or is a litter only if it's enclosed? How do you spell that? A litter. L-I-T-T-E-R. A litter. Not like It's like a litter of cats? Yes. Or a, a litter that you, is used to carry a prominent person. Uh, well, okay. Uh, it, she called it a sedan in the episode. She uh, actually Sometimes says, it's just a chair. The, she says, oh, I think we can skip the sedan, is what she said. Yeah. And like up until now, I thought a sedan was a, was a type of car, you know, um, which I don't know that they really... Do they make sedans anymore? Well, a like Corvette is like a ship, isn't it? Yeah. Well, anyways, yeah, when you look true. up sedan, it's over. Your overwhelming responses are for cars, but it actually means uh, historically. There's another definition, and it's an enclosed chair for conveying one person carried between horizontal poles by two or more. Yeah. So well, I don't. I, but know. that's an enclosed one. What about litter? You look up litter while I try to close up this. Uh... Well, litter. I was. I don't even know about this litter. I'm asking you to look it up as a favor, sir. Didn't you say litters are enclosed? I, no, I was asking if they were enclosed, but maybe the sedan is what's enclosed and a litter is not enclosed. Maybe a litter means something entirely different. Well, I was just saying that, okay, I'll look it up, but I was just saying that a sedan is apparently you something- look it up and I'll make the attempt to, it's, to get in. It's trash, a group of young animals, um, it's to make things untidy, archaic, it's provide with litter as bedding, a horse or other animal- um, I don't see anything a litter about. Oh wait, a vehicle yeah. containing a bed or seat enclosed by curtains and carried on men's shoulders or by animals. Yeah, see okay. a litter. No, okay, this is but that's enclosed. And it's more of like a like a yeah like more of a housing. This a sedan is just a is like a is like a, a portable chair with a top on it or something that you carry people. Uh, who with. says you don't learn anything on the It's Got Star Trek podcast? Um, not me. Not this. I never week. said that. <laughs> I right. say that all the uh, time. Next week we will discuss Lower Decks season four episode five which is titled Empathological Fallacies. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fallacy. so may, may, maybe we can expect some Betazoid shenanigans or something similar. To Erica, I always loved science. That was my path. Because I only believe in science. <laughs> I don't believe in God. I believe in science. <laughs> Sorry, that's what? totally stupid. <laughs> What's that from? That was from Nacho Libre. <laughs> oh, okay. See, I, I only saw There's that There's another once. line. He's like, I hate all the orphans in the world. There's another line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, next week is empath empathological Emp fallacies. Empanada. What? Is it empanada, empanada fallacies. Yeah. Empanada. That's, what I, that's what I said. Uh, in the intervening time, uh, you can get in contact with us and join in the fun on social media, social pretty much everywhere media. at it's got Star Trek dot com, or at it's got Star Trek. So it's, it's Twitter and Blue Sky, Twitter, and Facebook and Instagram Facebook. and did Threads. You see, did you see how Kokor fucked Shacks up? He just fucking tossed him aside. Uh, YouTube, we're on YouTube. Definitely subscribe to us on YouTube, even if you don't listen to us there. Why not subscribe? It's helpful. Uh, you can like and subscribe. You can rate and review. That would be good. Reviews would be good, especially on iTunes, if you wouldn't mind. All I have is my stink. 
We should do a contest where we got some of this lower deck swag from the uh, premiere thing that I, I got to go to. Uh, we should give some of it away from, yeah. we'll, we'll pick people randomly who leave I wish I could have gone to that. Reviews. That sounded awesome. Well, we'll go to the next one. Uh, but yeah, you leave us some reviews. That would be cool. Um, that means a lot. You can also write us at feedback at itscottstartrek.com. That's please where, that's where you can send any complaints. Uh, <laughs> and um, itscottstartrek.com is the website. It's the easiest place if you want to send yourself or somebody you know. Oh type yeah, type that's Scott the Star stuff. Trek. Uh, one of the cool things you can do there is you can sort the podcast by by series because we you know we've covered episodes from every series we've covered some movies some gen- general topics etc there's a whole list go through the menu and you can you can if you if you only want to watch listen to the voyager coverage then those are those are the episodes you can click on the voyager and, and they look find, awesome listen to those episodes so uh that's the website www.discussstartrek.com so grandmama boimler that's it for this week we look forward to talking to you next week <laughs> Until until then, have a lovely have a lovely time. Good goodbye. I don't know. Please let me support my number one Orion amiga. Okay, sure. Why not? Maybe it'll be good for you guys to see what my home world is actually like. Hell yeah! Triple threat, girls trip. I hope we will be allowed to view their aquifers. Ooh, okay, to then get around.